Welcome back to the Focus TV, as promised. Uh, Cardo, the floor is yours. Yeah, like you said, uh, you know, the college basketball season for the Division One, uh, Division Two, JUCOs, uh, Division Threes, they kind of already been on the way. They started last week, but Division One, it started yesterday. And, uh, you know, I was at GW, you know, first uh, season on a, a Caputo, you know, trying to see if they can get the program back to where it was on the loan again, where they were threatening for eight tenths championships and uh, also NCAA uh, tournament bursts, man, you know, consistently year in, year out, and producing multiple pros. Uh, it was a great era. It's been a while. Um, hopefully, they, you know, Chris Caputo, with his pedigree, he can turn that, turn things around, get it back on track like that. Uh, but, you know, they started yesterday, started the 2022-23 uh, season with an 85-58 win over Virginia State. Uh, Virginia State is a CIAA contender in Division Two. for those that don't know. Um, they're current, uh, they came in in the preseason ranked fourth, so it wasn't just a pushover type of team. They're a team that's fully capable of, you know, winning the whole CIAA and getting to the Division Two national tournament. Uh, so it was a nice little test, man, for uh, GW to get things started, especially under a new coach, new system. Uh, they, the core is still there, their experience, but you got a lot of newcomers uh, that I'm going to talk about in a little bit, a lot of freshmen, a lot of transfers. So they're still trying to jail as well as the season begins. Uh, but one name that's been there the last few years, James Bishop, um, James Bishop IV. Uh, he finished with the game high 21 points, a career high nine assists and four boards. Uh, fellow backcourt mate Brandon Adams added 15 points and eight rebounds. Um, Adams was unconscious from three-point range. Uh, especially in the first half, uh, he hit four or seven from deep. Uh, both of them are from Baltimore, and uh, they represented Baltimore well. Uh, they combined for 36 of GW's 85 points. Uh, that's that they had it going, man. And that it was pivotal for them to play well because Virginia State, their backcourt, uh, Terrence Hunter, Whitfield, and Francis BJ Fitzgerald were preseason CIAA. Um, all conference selections, so they come in with their pedigree as well. So it wasn't gonna be an easy night, but you know, they showed up and, and got it done. Uh, Virginia State was led by uh BJ Fitzgerald, who I just spoke on, uh, who posted 14 points, eight rebounds, four assists, and three steals. Uh, the difference in the game, uh, GW defense was locked in from the jump, uh, they, they weren't playing around, they were flying around, and that's something last season, the last couple of years, it, it really hasn't been there. Similar to what we talked about with the Wizards. Ray just talked about with the Wizards. It's kind of the same thing. More, uh, It was more of a focus under the old coach. I know, you know, analytics and, you know, three-point shooting and all that. And they, and they really got away from the essence of what the, the totality of what basketball is all about. And the defense suffered, and that's why they were up and down. Uh, they held the Trojans to 30% shooting from the field, which included 25.9% shooting in the second half. Uh GW also held Virginia State other CIAA preseason on guard. Terrence Hunter Winfield at 10 points on two or 14 shooting from the field, and those two shots were three pointers. Uh, so that kind of gives you an idea of how potent their defense was throughout the game. They had their slip ups, you know, times where they got flat, and Virginia State was able to kind of, I want to say, make it a game. They made it, uh, made it respectable. You know, they ended up losing by. I think uh, the biggest lead that GW got was 32 at one point. But for most of the game, especially in the first half, Virginia State kept it around 12 to 11. They were right there where a good run, you know, they, they it's, it's a game. Uh, but once Virginia State kind of closed the gap, so to speak, where it was threatening to get in single digits, GW would tighten the reins and get back focused, and they would extend the lead back up to 20-something just that quick. Um Kind of touch on some other players that shine. Ricky Lindo Jr. He was a, he was played by foul trouble. He didn't shoot the ball particularly well, but he you know he he stuffs the stat sheet. That's what he does. Uh, he's their Swiss Army knife. You know, four he had four points, but he had a game high ten rebounds, three assists, three steals, and two blocks. Uh, you know, I thought at times he let the refs get in his head, was frustrating him or whatnot. But you know, it's too early for that. You got you gotta you gotta focus, man. Just just play through all that first game. They rusty too. You know, it is what it is. But I like the fact that he still tried to – he found other ways to contribute uh, to help them win. Now, I expect, obviously, him to shoot better. But stuff in the stat sheet, that's what he does. So, you know, I expect a lot more double doubles and probably near triple doubles uh, to come as the season go along. 
Noel Brown. I was high on him this summer, watching him throughout the Kennedy League play. Uh, his first two years, he was just raw, trying to figure out the college game, trying to figure out his game. But this summer, you saw like a, it, it's clicking. It clicked, especially offensively. Uh, normally, he, you know, the last couple of years, you get the ball in the paint, you know, double clutch, bring the ball down low, do everything you – a big man, when you coaching him up, you, you know, tell him not to do. And it was hard to keep him in the game. But Kennedy Lee play, he would take his time. He was more poised. He used his dribble to get to his spot inside the paint uh, or out the 10 feet, and he, he scored at will. He, it was consistent. So that was encouraging seeing that. Uh, and he kind of showed that it, and it continued in this game. He kind of showed the same thing. Uh, he finished with nine points to six rebounds of four four from the field. His hands done got better when they drop it all to him. He's catching the ball. He's either going up strong or he's taking his time, pump faking, uh, making a big jump and dribbling to the other side to you know, finish reverse lay-ins and stuff. He's just being more efficient with his play. I know that comes with experience. He's a junior now. He knows what to expect uh, or whatnot. Big men take a lot longer to develop than, than guards. So that's an encouraging sign. They're going to need him in the A-10. Uh, the A-10 is big, and, they, and it's a lot of experienced bigs. So they're going to need him uh, to to hold down the middle. Max Edwards, uh, uh, that's a transfer from Kansas State. You know, I, I saw him in high school a lot. You know, came up to Jim Couch a couple years. Uh, but he's from New York. So, yeah, he went, you know, went to Jim Couch for a couple years, came down to Delaware, played a slam dunk for his high school team. Uh, one thing I loved about his game, obviously, he's talented, but – uh, he loves the lights. When the lights is brightest, he shows up. You know what I'm saying? So he's one of those gamers. And uh, um, came out of high school, he signed with Kansas State. You know, things didn't go well over there, so he transferred to GW. Uh, for those that don't know, Caputo's a New York guy. He actually played at the same high school Kenny Smith and Kenny Anderson did, played on the same legendary coach. So he has deep New York ties. So that's the connection, obviously, with Max and all those guys. So, but. Look, he was played by foul trouble, sophomore played by foul trouble in his own right, but he still finished with 12.6 and six rebounds on 5 of 8 shooting and, uh, in like 21 minutes. So you don't normally see that from young players. That's that's one of the things they're trying to figure out. When they get into foul trouble, normally, mentally, it's hard to get them back into the game because uh, they're frustrated. They're on the bench a long time. Uh, they feel like the ref's picking on them, but you didn't see none of that. He has he has the poise of a vet, you know, upperclassman, man. And then he showed that, but he's ultra talented. He can score from three levels. Uh, that he can defend multiple positions, rebound, uh, you know, dynamic. Like if it's a one on one type of deal, he prefers that. He can he can break you down, make something happen, man. And he can pass. He's an underrated passer. So uh, he's a complete package, man. I know uh, Kapu, I kind of saw the writing on the wall with like, man, he might be starting. You know, Caputo, Caputo in the preseason was kind of, you know, we, we'll see. You got to build it up. I'm like, yeah, you but you can't fool me, dog. I know what's going on. I see the practices. So, yeah, he did get the start. And, uh, you know, he made an impact despite his limited minutes, man. So, look, it was a good start to the season. Uh, the, the main thing is just continue to build as good, as many positives as you saw, as good as they played to, you know, blow out Virginia State. There were still some negatives. They turned the ball over a lot. Uh, they could do better on the boards. Um they, they have a, a definite size advantage. Ricky Lindo, 6'8". Uh, Hunter Dean is 6'10". Noel, 6'11". Uh, uh, so, uh, they got a, a transfer, a, a sophomore transfer who's 7'1", can shoot threes. Uh, his, name's, his name slips me at the moment, man. But, uh, you know, he's talented. A little, little thin, little thin, but he's not afraid to throw his body around. He's not soft. He's just thin. You know what I mean? But he's skilled. Uh, European kid. Uh, so um, they got a lot of size, man. They need to take advantage of that. It's going to be key, you know, especially controlling the boys, uh, offering some rim protection, and just getting them easy basking inside for the games where they may not be hitting from the outside. But, you know, all in all, man, it was a good win. They'll play uh, Howard this Friday uh, at 6 p.m. So that should be, you know, kind of a little buzz for the city, man, you know, D.C. and all that. So, Every, I know every time they played them since I've been covering GW, I believe this is my ninth year. Every time they play, it's it's, it's a packed game. It's a lot of buzz in there in the arena. So I'm looking forward to it. All right, uh, 